In the previous video, we saw how we can implement a stack data structure using array-based or linked list-based implementation. Most of the time when you are working in an in industry, you won't be creating your own data structure from scratch, but instead will be using a data structure which has already been implemented by a library. So in this video, we are going to show you like how to use the stack data structure which is already pre-built and it comes packaged in the C++ standard template library. So the stack ADT that we discussed in the previous set of videos consists of these common operations that include push, pop, peak, size, and is empty. The C++ standard template library has these set of functions that kind of map to this ADT. And throughout the course, we'll be learning how the ADT functions or ADT abstractions are actually implemented in the C++ STL for different data structures. So for the push ADT function or the, the push ADT operation, this is actually implemented by the push function that is a part of C++ STL. So how you can in evoke the push function is first you need to create a stack and how you create that is just by using like hash include stack and then using namespace uh, std then you can define a new stack using this particular syntax which is you have stack integer or a template parameter followed with the name of the stack like let's call this stk Similarly, if we want a stack of strings, we can replace this integer by strings. If it's a stack of objects, it could be like stack of objects. It could hold any particular item. It also has the other uh, functions which include pop. So this function, what it typically does is it removes the topmost element from the stack. So let's say if we have a stack uh, that consists of a, b, and stack is pointing to this stack, so when we do stk.pop, it will remove this b from the top of the stack. Now top returns a reference to the top element of the stack. So we'll just get a reference to b, but we will not uh, be deleting an element from the top of the stack. Size returns the current size of the stack and empty returns whether the stack is empty or not, which is uh, the, the, the return type of this function is of type boolean. Now you can read more about these functions from uh, this reference which is c++.com reference. Uh, it also has the references for different data structures that are already implemented in STL. So I would highly encourage you to read these documents to understand like how to use a stack STL. So let's take a quick example uh, for a particular code that we have written for stacks. Now this is not a good use case like for solving this problem it is one of the examples but the intention is to show you like how to use the stack AD, uh, stack stl implementation so here we have we, we are basically building a function called check palindrome that takes in a string and returns whether a string is palindrome or not now to give you an example of what is a palindrome string like let's call dad like if we reverse this string we get something like dad. So this string is palindrome because if you reverse the string and is it if it is equal to the original string, that's a palindrome. Similarly, if you have something like uh, DAA, now if you reverse this, you get AAD. Now since these two strings are not equal, this is not a palindrome. So there are hundreds of different ways to check whether a string is palindrome or not. Like one way could be to just reverse the string and compare two different strings. Now here we are going to use stacks for checking whether a string is palindrome or not. Now one thing you need to know here is that like let's say if we add all the characters of a string like let's call a string like data. Like if we try to insert this in a stack like by pushing each character one at a time like you iterate over the string and add just these elements into the stack our stack would look something like this which is a will be on top and then d a uh, d finally so when we pop 
the elements from the stack and if we add it to a new string what we are going to get is we are going to get the string which is uh, a d a d which is a complete opposite of the inserted string so one thing you need to know here is that like if we push elements into a stack and if we retrieve them back they they are attained in the order which is reverse of the initial order how, uh, of how they were pushed so how we can solve this check palindrome is like let's say if you have a string of uh, size 5 like let's call it madam what we can do is we can push all these elements onto a stack next we can pop each element and then we can create a new string we can check whether the new string and the inserted string if they are equal or not if that's the case then the string is palindrome otherwise it's not true now how I am solving this problem is by using the property of mirrors which is if you see palindrome the other half of the palindrome palindromic uh, uh, string is actually the mirror of the first half so what I'm going to do is if I have a string I'm going to check if the string has length which is uh, uh, even or is the length like let's say if our string is called str if is the length like even or odd so if it is even we just need to check like let's say if our string is a b b a if it is even we have to check through the center if all elements are equal in the first half to the second half but if the string is odd what we need to do is like we do not care about the central element which is in this case in madam like uh, we don't care about d because it's it's palindromic at the center element so what we need to compare is whatever is to the left of center whether this element is similar to this one and then m is similar to this m so how i solved this problem like using c++ is that i created a stack of type character because i'm going to push each character into the string i take out the middle index which is where uh, till what point i should be uh, inserting characters into the uh, it into this particular stack so let's say if we have again like madam i first found the mid index which is technically here and how I get it is using s dot length divided by 2 which is 5 divided by 2 now since this is integer division it's going to get rid of the 0.5 and here the middle index would be just 2 so technically I have access to 0 1 and 2 which is this is the middle index if it is even I'll technically have access to this element so I'm checking with the base case whether the length of the string is less than 2 which is if the string is of size 1 like if, if there's one character in the string or if it is an empty string then we should return true which is the definition of uh, palindrome next I'm inserting each of the characters till the middle index minus 1 which is in this case only n and a are going to be inserted in the stack using a for loop so at the end of this line 10 our stack would look something like this which is m will be pushed a will be pushed onto the stack next i have one more if conditional which checks whether the string length was even or odd so if it was even nothing would happen because we are on the correct path but if this was not even which is if this was odd i would like to skip the middle character which is a d like we, we do not want to check the, the middle character because by definition that's palindromic so that's why I have mint mid index plus one next in the next for loop what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare the top element uh, of the stack which is this a and I'm going to compare this with the second half which is is a equal to a so if that is the case I'm going to keep going forward and if at any point if the matching preceding character uh, the succeeding character is not equal to the top of the element of the stack then we are going to return false because that we know the the string is not palindromic in that case 
So this is one example of how you can use stacks in C++. Uh, this problem is a, a very naive problem. It can be solved in hundreds of different ways. Uh, I, th the intention was to show you like how stacks in C++ works, but not to uh, uh, like uh, like probably you might not be using this uh, a stack data structure to solve this problem uh, if the use is not there. So we are going to see a lot more problems during our problem solving lecture uh, for this video. Uh, that's all we have. Thank you.